Yeah, so welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. And we are continuing the discussion surrounding Mount Pleasant's decision to not renew the contract of head coach Theodore Whitmore and his supporting coaching staff following the team's second place finish in the just concluded Jamaica Premier League season. Mount Pleasant sporting director Paul Christie in the previous segment reiterated the club's new focus and approach of incorporating its academy players in its senior setup. Now, since parting ways, Theodore Whitmore has sought to clarify his departure from the club. He said, I wish to categorically state that neither myself nor any of my backroom staff have been fired by Mount Pleasant Football Academy. We were employed to do a job with clear objectives, which we surpassed in both seasons. We created history at Mount Pleasant. We inherited a failing club and turned it around immediately. We won the club's first ever championship in our first season and took the team back to the final in the second season, losing on penalties. Mount Pleasant have had six coaches or six different coaching assignments in the six Premier League seasons they have had. And uh, Sportsmax commentator Dwight Jeremiah has been tracking the development. He joins us now by telephone. Uh, Dwight, I trust that you would have seen Paul Christie and what he had to say a few minutes ago. Um, how does this story grab you? Because it appears to be, based on what they are saying, a major shift in their objectives in developing their young players and fast-tracking them into um, senior domestic football. Yeah, I mean, to tell the truth, Lance, even if the viewers are new, Lance, um, to tell the truth, I, I wasn't surprised by it because once they failed to, to win... The, the Premier League, I, I did in some some comments, you know, just saying that they probably, it's it's not far-fetched to think that they would, not on the premise of what they're saying now about new direction, but just the fact that over the years, uh, it's about, you know, immediate results. Um, despite the fact that they won it last year, I, I'm not quite sure if the shift, and based on what Christy has said, you know, Christy and I have good relationship, myself and Tapa also have some good relationships, but with a shift we've seen even at international level where clubs may seek to incorporate their academy and seeing that they have a higher percentage of their academic graduates transition into the senior team. But I don't know if the ship is suggesting that Theodore Topper Whitmore is a would not be good with dealing with young talents and molding them to come to the fore rather than to or is it suggest in that he's only good with the, the, the talents that have been developed already and are established. But um, to, to remove the head coach uh, is to suggest that because you could have them in place despite the shift to have the academic graduates coming through and making greater transition. Yeah, yeah so if I'm, if I'm hearing you correctly, Dwight, you, you, you don't seem to be fully buying into what Mount Pleasant is putting out publicly. I am just saying that if, if, if that is the case, then it is suggesting that the, the academic graduates coming up were not yet fully established players. You are saying, therefore, then that Theodore Topper Whitmore and his staff would not be the right set of persons to groom these youngsters or are not best capable to do that because a shift could come that, yes, a lot of persons have been seen in the past. Why is it that Mount Pleasant does not have more of their academic graduates coming through to the senior team? Um, because one would have expected that to be the case, but it's more like a, a, a galactical type of thing where Real Madrid would do and just go and buy the best players out there. So a lot of persons were saying that should have been the case a long time. So fine, but, but are you saying that the set of the technical staff that was there before is not capable of managing these young talents? That is another thing. And there's a lot of things, Lance, you're in Kingston, I'm out here in the West. I don't know if it's because on this side where I hear a lot more stuff that a lot of rumblings are going on behind the scene. And there may be someone at Mount Pleasant in short order. Yeah, and Dwight, we, we sort of lost you just for a little moment um, just now. Um, you can tell me if this is what you were talking about, the fact that very soon they may be getting rid of some of the players as well. Players, yes, that is expected, but they also, you could see some shift, I'm, I'm told, in in probably executive directors type of person. So, um, yeah. Yeah, a lot. 
because you could see some some high decision makers going as well. Yeah, a lot to really ponder on, especially because Mount Pleasant but, has been a dominant team, Dwight, when you think about the Jamaica Premier League and how they have gone about their business. A question, though, in your own view, do you think it was a smart decision to let go of Tapper? Well, not renew his contract. Let me be clear. Well, his statement that Lance was reading, further down it said that there was a an agreement in principle yeah. to have it extended both parties um but then in the end they never they never reached it for whatever reasons he just he did say many reasons but didn't state those i i would feel based on the fact that the qualification for the the, the, the concacaf club championship and stuff that they would have been given the opportunity to 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 lead the team into those competitions having qualified the team to so do and to think about it in two seasons to be placed no lower than second place, winning it in one occasion, I, I, I feel it's it's enough for you to get another chance at it. Um, and judging from what Theodore is saying and the fact that he at the that he put out what more pleasant achievements were before his arrival and after, it feels like he wanted to continue. For sure, and also the fact that he was thinking about bringing the team back early to prepare for the Caribbean Championship. So, yeah, he didn't want to go for sure. And um, from what I understand, too, is that despite the fire the entire staff, one member of that staff will continue to work on with Mount Pleasant at the academy level as well. Yeah. Are you willing to say who that member of staff is? I think Chris has alluded to the fact in his statement when I when I saw it in the Observer that the door is not shut on Theodore Topper Whitmore, but he has stated that his assistant Ferguson is someone who they are well advanced in looking in in having him play a role there. From my sources, he he is already there. Mm. Yeah, and I guess that would probably tie in with the shift because Ferguson does have a track record of working with teenagers because of his success, success with Jamaica College and the fact that he has done a good job with, with, with young players. So maybe there could be some truth to that uh, Davian Ferguson yeah, I, would be sticking with, in. Yes, yes. For, for sure, in terms of the fit, there's no issue with that. Um, I don't know in terms of the team he was working with and, and how they will feel about it or whether they felt that this was a done deal before all of this unfolded with the, the rest of them is another matter. It's, it, it may be just how things are done. That, that could be the case. Uh, but for sure, uh, the changes happening at Mount Pleasant, how, how, how they went about it may not go down well with some persons, but I guess it's the shift. I am not sure, as I said at the beginning of my statement, that is it that Theodore Topper Whitmore is not seen as someone who can mold talents if they were allowed to transition, or the fact that they're going to transition more of their um, academic graduates to the senior team, that's, that's what you read from it, that it wouldn't be the best, he wouldn't be the best person to guide such a project. Yeah, I, I'm very keen to get your opinion, Dwight, on part of the statement that Theodore Whitmore um, issued, because uh, to me, when you use certain words, it, I, I take it as a journalist that you're, you're sending a message. And for Whitmore to say, we created history at Mount Pleasant, and we inherited a failing club and turned it around immediately. Now, the, the word failing is, is, is an interesting word because that has never been a... They've never been a failing club because they've always made the playoffs and they've always done well. But you could argue that they failed because they didn't win. And it just seems to me that Tapper wanted to make a statement when he used a term like that. And uh, I'm siding with your, your view that it is possible that he wants to put it out there that he, he probably feels that he, 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 he could have stayed on in, in this job, even though he is making it clear that he wasn't fired and that um, the contract, they went there and did a job which they were, with which they were tasked to do. 
Do I? Uh, yes, Lance, mm -hmm. I, I think it's a strong word used, and I think uh, you hear me? Yes, go ahead. You hear me still? Okay. Yeah, no, I'm saying it's, it's, it's a strong word used, yes, failing, and I think it's relative if you look at it. Maybe he's looking at the senior team, but he went further to suggest that it is during his time that they transferred a player, Trevante Stewart, to one of the top five leagues in Europe, and he's suggesting, I think, he's suggesting failure that as an academy, you'd expect that there would be a lot of uh, transfer of players going either, well, transitioning to see the team, but also exporting players. And he's feeling that it is during his time that they won the Premier League and also exported, had their biggest export to a, a top five European league. So I think it is in that context that he may be putting the term failing because you'd feel and many felt that once Mount Pleasant came about, a lot of these things were going to happen in terms of, because of the investment, they were going to dominate the local football in terms of winning the Premier League. But a lot of their academic graduates would have made transition to, to international football um, or clubs. So I think in that context, he's, he's sort of saying it is during his time that these things occur. And as such, it wasn't happening before, which he felt it was the, the objective of the project. So it was failing before him. That, that, that's how I see it. Yeah. He went with yeah. That well, well, well said, Dwight. I understand exactly the point that you're making. Well, thanks for putting some more um, legs on this story because a lot of football fans in, in, in Jamaica have been asking questions about this decision by Mount Pleasant. And let's see what happens from here. First of all, um, Harold Thomas has uh, been given the role of, of reshaping things. And as far as the new coaching staff is concerned, they've said, in short order, they'll make an announcement on that. So we await that. And maybe when we hear that, we'll chat to you again, Dwight. <clears throat> Always a pleasure to chat with you, Lance. Am I right? Okay. Yeah. Good. Great. We'll be back with more on the Sportsman Zone after this.